Hey, uh, party people. Today, we're heating things up. My name is Big Boss Raz, and I'm a VTuber and streamer focusing on video games and arts and crafts like perler beads and crocheting. You can catch me on Twitch where I stream every Wednesday and Saturday. You can find a link in the doobly-doo below. This video is a part of a series where I go over a basic introduction to perler beads and fuse beads in general. If you haven't watched it already, consider checking out the how to get started with perler bead video. Now, before we get started, I highly suggest you sort out your beads ahead of time to make things go a little smoother. If you need help with that, check out my sorting and organizing video so that you don't have to dig for particular colors if you have a giant bucket of beads sitting in front of you. So, you're ready to make a perler bead creation. Here are the materials we're gonna need. Your beads, your pattern or patterns, a pegboard or pegboards, an iron, ironing paper or parchment paper, some patience, and a willingness to fail. Just as you should read a recipe entirely before you start cooking, I think you should watch this entire video before you start ironing to make sure you have a good understanding of the process. There are a few styles of fuses, but I would call the main two the standard melt and the flat melt. There's an infinite variation of how you can melt it, it just depends on what you want your final product to look like. If you like to see the circles inside the beads, consider the standard melt. If you want to go for a more pixelated look, consider the flat melt. Frankly, I think both ways are great, but I'm more prone to the standard melt. There are some issues you can run into with the flat melt, but we'll look at them in a bit. No matter what you decide, the process is very similar. Just as a side note, you will have to get better at this through trial and error. With experience, you will find a nice rhythm of what works best for you. It'll take some time, and you're gonna make some mistakes along the way. But when you mess up, or things don't come out like you want, just take a deep breath, learn from the experience, and try again. You'll figure it out. In the meantime, here's what works for me. First, we place our beads on our pegboard on a flat, heat-safe surface. At this point, you can either prepare your piece by using the tape method or iron directly on the pegboard. I'll be making another video describing how to do that method at some point, but today, we'll do it the old-fashioned way. Next, we turn on our iron to a medium-high setting and wait for it to heat up completely. Some folks crank it to the highest setting, but I like to have a little more control with the heating. For me and my handy iron, that takes about 2 minutes, but some might take up to 5 minutes. If you're unsure, try searching up your brand online to see what is recommended. It is crucial that your iron is heated completely before you start, so just sit back and wait for it to heat up. I get antsy and lose track of time easily, so I just set an alarm. Once your iron is heated up, throw your ironing paper or parchment paper on your beads. Make sure that you don't have any lines or creases where you plan on ironing. This little blue totoro was ironed that way, and you can visibly see the line there from the crease in the paper. I think this might have been the first or second thing I ever made. Before you start ironing, just know that you should really resist the urge to lift the iron until every bead has melted at least a little bit. If you lift your iron before the beads have fused to one another, some chunks will lift as they're stuck to the paper, but the rest will stay behind. Inevitably, when the heated chunks start warping and drop down, it might smack all the unmelted beads away. If it's still early in the process, you might be able to salvage it, but it's a doozy to be sure. Iron in a circular motion to avoid overheating any specific section. Take care to put extra pressure on the edges to ensure they're melted. The edge beads are the ones most likely to jump around, so it's important to keep an eye out for them. As the beads heat up, you'll be able to see them bleed through the paper and the circles get smaller. Take your time to make sure all of the beads stick to the paper. Feel free to put additional pressure on those stubborn sections that aren't heated all the way through. Don't press down too hard though, or you risk melting and warping your pegboard. Keep in mind that different colors fuse at different rates. Also, different sections will heat up faster than others due to the amount of beads around them. Depending on your heat and size of the piece, this can take anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds. Once you're all done on one side, go ahead and flip them over and do the same for the other side. Once you're done, throw a heavy object on them so they don't warp and bend. If you want to try the flat melt, just keep ironing until the holes either close or are really tiny. Just be very careful that you don't overmelt them, as they run the risk of exploding and deforming. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the same design with different melts.
Some other tips. If you want to have a lot of control, consider lowering the heat on your iron. The longer you melt the beads, the thinner your piece will be. Just something to keep in mind. You can also nuke one side heavily and leave the other side untouched. I've done that before for my coaster projects to ensure a uniform look across the beads front side. So there you have it. Now you should know how to iron your perler beads. If you learned something new or just enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe to find out when I drop new videos. It's free for you, but it goes a long way for me. Thanks for your time and consideration. So what melt do you prefer to do and what tips did I miss in this video? Leave a comment down below. I love to see what other people have in mind. Thanks for watching. Until next time, peace out.